Hello everyone, it's Mari here again. And the topic I'd like to discuss today is the uh, rules, regulations and manners of politeness in Japan that you may, may you may not know because you haven't grown in Japan and that is why you may not follow them and it's not that you will get into trouble, but uh, people will feel uncomfortable and then you might feel uncomfortable. So, there are rules that are Japanese limited and they may seem strange or uncommon for people from other countries, but they do exist and it's better to follow them while you're out there. So, the first mistake people who just started learning the Japanese language and people that like came to Japan the first time and then want to practice the language, they make some language mistakes that are not used in Japanese. So, the first one is goodbye. Goodbye in Japanese is sayonara. So, you may heard that a lot of times. It truly, really means a goodbye, but the meaning behind this word, the like, whole meaning of this word, is farewell. So, sayonara is more like uh, farewell and I won't be seeing you in a year or two or maybe, maybe never again. If you are with your friends, if you are with your teachers, like if you are living if your class has ended or you're leaving the room, saying sayonara is not... People who, who will hear this word will not feel really comfortable. And uh, there are a lot of other ways to sell, to like part with your friends or and other people. If it's your friends, you can just say bye-bye or jane, which means like jane or matane, which means like see you again. You can say if you are talking to your colleague or sometimes if you, if you are talking to your teacher, it depends on the uh, teacher and student relationship. So it's kara uh, it means you work hard today. It may sound like you're praising the person, but it's just a phrase you need to tell when you part with your co-worker like it's more like thanks for working together with me, you did a good job, so have a nice time resting. It's all, all the same meaning. Uh, the other phrase is, you can just say arigato gozaimashita to your teacher if you're just finished your lesson and going out of the classroom, you can just say thank you to your teacher. You can say it's like take care if you are partnering with your friends. There are a lot of different ways, but since sayonara is not the best way, so do not use it and do not use it with your Japanese friends. The other thing, it's not that common mistake, but there is no bon appetit word. Like, it's usually there is a word in every language but Japanese. They say itadakimasu to themselves. It means uh, when you start eating food, like thank you for your food, you're thanking God or whatever not. You also say itadakimasu when you receive a present. So if I give you some, even not a food, but um, some little gift or not even a gift, it's just treating you something or uh, and it's like that you can uh, say it like a like I think thanks I received it but you never say it to another person like never ever not in any occasion you never say it to any other person you only say it to yourself and when you see a person next to you eating you shouldn't say anything the only well sometimes if for example you treated your friend some candy or cookie and he or she said it like a mask like I started it right now you may say go you kuri like uh, take your time or enjoy but 
it's better not to say anything. And the third common word in uh, everyday Japanese language is aishiteru. Aishiteru, I think it's a word that like every person who knows a little bit about Japan knows. It means I love you, but it never used in Japan among friends, among uh, uh, saying you love some, you love sushi or you love, uh, uh, I don't know, dogs. Uh, you never say it unless you say it like one in a lifetime to the most special person in the whole world. And it's kind of that word is not a joke. And uh, you, for Japanese people, it's a very special word that holds like a really special meaning. And if you say it to someone like who is not your very, very deep girlfriend or boyfriend, it would be really uncomfortable for them to hear it and you would be misunderstood and laughed at. So it's a very nice word, ski or daiski, like, like it. And you can use this word in all situations, all occasions, from talking about food, uh, from telling to your parents, telling it to your friends, telling it to your boyfriend or girlfriend, telling it to your dog, telling it to your favorite idol. It is a word you can use anywhere and it's completely okay. But forget the word Aishteru unless it's your future husband or wife or anyone like this. So... Okay, we're done with uh, main main language mistakes. Uh, if you ever visited a Japanese store, you may notice that Japanese people usually don't say thank you or anything to the store workers, especially in convenience stores or so. Uh, the store workers usually say welcome, and I say uh, like. Uh, thank you, and everything like that. You shouldn't respond to "Irashaimase." It's what all workers of all stores around Japan should say to a customer who comes to the store. It's like a greeting. It's the same as a door ring bell. You shouldn't respond. It's okay even not to look at the shop worker. It's not impolite. Well, you can bow you can like say hello and it's also okay but do not think japanese people are impolite it's happened so it's just such rules of japanese society you shouldn't say worker of shop they if they don't say they would be scolded by their boss or anything like that so for if we, I had to explain the reason behind this word, it's to show the customer that you are here to and ready to help him or her if he's looking uh, for something. Especially um, when you come to a small store and you may not see the shop worker because, like, shop worker maybe somewhere like behind the cashier like certain things or i don't know some cleaning the i don't know the store or it's like that he should scream like not scream uh like say in loud voice like welcome to the customer who are out to the store uh to understand when where the worker is and uh, if he needs any help, uh, so he can come to a shop worker and ask for it. And uh, be ready if you're going to clothing store, be ready for shop workers to talk with you. Like if you like to try clothes here, you can do it here. Uh, like, would you like to try something? Would like to look at our new collection? Well, don't be, you can just smile and say thank you, just don't be scared or surprised. It's like, it's what they should do or they get fired. So, another next thing foreign people may get wrong 
is Japanese culture of presence. Japanese present given and taken culture is uh, some it goes back to the history and it has a lot of traditional and like even kind of a religious ways uh, what it came to by today is Japanese people usually should give you something back it's what they do it can be explained it what they culture has and what they should do and what they should definitely do so if you're living in japanese society you'd also need to do the same like if you treated your friend for a chocolate if you helped your friend to do something if you helped your friend to do homework if you helped uh if you i don't know help your friend to get some limited item for a store and bought it for him or her you will usually receive something back it can be even like small chocolate or a small uh i don't know gift candies or anything like that and uh not giving something back Japanese would feel really uncomfortable and uh, it's like you thank the person and there is like no nothing between you left so no it's it's not like they will stop friendship with you or something it just they thanked for the gift or for the some things they received and uh, so they don't feel like they own to you and uh, if you are the one who received the gift from japanese friend or if you are the one who like received some help you should always give something back it shouldn't be an expensive present you shouldn't invite your friend to the most expensive restaurant in the city you can just buy if your friends like like candies you can just buy a small chocolate cute chocolate bars if uh, i don't know some cute kitchen and give it to it give it to him or her usually you give a present with two hands and like say thank you for uh, helping me the other day or thank you for like getting me that souvenir the other day and that's also like important things of Japanese culture be taken out of it also if you work in some shop if you work in some group so if you have like a stable even spa job you're visiting every day and you're going like for to travel for one or two days to another city uh, you better buy a box of usually there is some candies sold in uh, all cities like on stations there are some big boxes of different sweet things and uh, it's better to buy one to give it to your colleagues because you took a day off and uh, they worked and that is why give it to them buy and give it to them so the other thing about getting friends in japan it's also confuse a lot of people but there is a big difference uh, if you met some person and you started chatting with him or her and uh, it seems like you like in, like each other in terms of friends and then you or he or she says like let's have let's meet again next time and uh, it's also a phrase they usually use to part okay let's meet again it doesn't mean you will meet again so there is a big difference that japanese people do know and foreigners do not always understand there is a big difference between exchanging numbers exchanging line accounts i don't know emails and things like that and 
telling like let's meet again next Friday and let's go to the cinema next Friday hang out uh, let's meet at five o'clock at the station in that case you'll probably meet and uh, you'll probably hang out but if they just say one day we can meet you shouldn't expect much of them and you shouldn't wait for the call or anything like that and you shouldn't get mad at them if they are not called you back because it's just a formal polite expression that doesn't really mean they want to continue chatting or hanging out with you of course it depends it also depends the person so what i told you about now is just the usual things. Of course, nowadays you can, even if you're kind of a close friend or even when you're studying together, you can ask directly, like, do you want to go there? You can invite them first if you want to get closer with someone, like, it's completely okay to ask you, if you have time, would like to go to a cafe tomorrow at noon, for example, and if uh, your Japanese friend heard your state in the correct time, he can understand that you want to, you really want to go somewhere and thus he will reply whether he has or has some time or not. So be aware of that too. And uh, now get into couples and get into relationships in Japan. So relationship language in Japan is somewhat difficult and because usual relationships and uh, uh, love and everything is kind of an awkward topic and uh, usually nobody in Japan would ever invite you like directly let's go to the hotel and you know make love together so there is a special relationship couple love language in Japan. You'd probably need to learn to understand the intentions of any, like, if you're a girl, I will talk from a side of a girl. So, to understand the intention of a boy you're spending time with, or you're going to hang around, or you want to maybe date. So, for example, if you have a friend he's for example kind of a close friend of yours and he's a boy but uh, there isn't anything between you two and if he invites you to have a dinner with him well it's okay you can go to have a dinner with him and after that if he asks you would you like to go to have some drink together after the dinner, if you say yes, you probably have just agreed to go to the hotel with him later. So after you had some drinks, you he'd probably invite you to, for example, a karaoke or to like, uh, I don't know, continue like asobi, it means like play or hang around anywhere else and that's probably where you'd end in a love hotel or something like that. It's do not think that the boy tricked you, do not think he's like a liar and and like that. It's a normal Japanese couple language. It's a normal language of agreement and moreover, if you are not dating and if he invites you the such way, it also and you agree, it also means that he hasn't any responsibilities and he's not your boyfriend and it's just a kind of a one night affair to have. So if you see him the next day with another girl, don't be shocked or don't be surprised because you agreed for it. So it's kind of a think Japanese girls know well. It's uh, 
kind of a, there are a lot of phrases uh, which both boys and girls use uh, to invite each other to the hotel, to the love hotel, because you will, you usually will never say it straightforward because it's awkward. And uh, for example, I had my phone, uh, I had my battery phone died. Uh, I want to charge it somewhere. Let's go charge it somewhere. Or uh, what was another one? It's not that I'm that uh, experienced, but uh, well, I kind of know about relationships in Japan. So there are a lot of phrases that can be misinterpreted if you don't know them. And uh, if you're, if you know Japanese language, and you start like being friends with a Japanese boy and uh, he will probably assume that you know everything of that. So don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. And uh, I mentioned it once in my previous videos, but in Japanese relationship, it is very important to for you two to announce whether you're a pair, whether you're a girlfriend and boyfriend or not. Because if not, no matter what you do together, nobody of you holds any responsibilities and nobody of you can be accused of cheating or anything else because you're not in a relationship and you're free to do anything you want. So take a big note of that. Take a big note of that and uh, take, like, if you start a relationship if you want to start a relationship, it's better to talk it, talk about it from the start, uh, like the relationship between you and what you expect of him and what he expects of you and anything like that. So yes, that's how it is. Another Japanese rules foreigners do not usually follow is taking photos so especially if you go to some concert or some live performances or anything like that taking photos is prohibited taking photos in japan is usually prohibited at such events and you can see like people staff workers with uh, no photo signs going around and Usually on like f concerts happening in outside Japan, uh, photos are prohibited, but people are usually taking it and it doesn't cause any problems and they upload it and everything like that. But not Japan. Japan is prohibited. You may, like if you try to take some photos, you some staff may ask you, may guide you to the exit and may ask uh, like even may take your ticket away and may take your phone or ask you to delete all, all photos from the concert and to never take it again or you may not even be allowed back and uh, well it depends on the concert depends on the venue but sometimes fans are to protect their privacy to protect uh, not their privacy, but the privacy of their fairy titles. They don't like for the photos or videos to be uploaded on the internet. And be sure that like fan next to you may ask you to stop taking photos. And be ready if some... If you upload it and you like successfully took a video or photo and upload it to the internet, some fans may like tweet to you asking to remove all them. It can happen and, well, it's a thing to be used of in Japan. Also taking photos, like a lot of Japanese people are really considered of their own privacy. So taking, even if you took some photos with friends, or like your close Japanese friends, you should always ask them whether it is okay to upload them to social networks. Because it may be not. And um, 
if it's not you should like use some stamps or use use some like mobile applications to erase the face because they're especially if some geeky events some people are hiding the way they are being otaku anime fans some people are hiding like the place where work some people are hiding like they don't want their face to appear on twitter because they are like posting some stuff they don't want to be found out by real life people in twitter and uh, if you posted the picture and they maybe recognize it would be really uncomfortable and really bad for them. So you should always ask your friends, even if it's like a polite manner, even if you if they already agreed like the previous time, you'd better ask them one more time when you took a picture. Because in Japan, the privacy is really protected and really important. Well, the next the one other thing about privacy, it's not the usual occasion, but if you manage to see a Japanese celebrity on street, do not approach him and do not take pictures of him. Japanese, like people all around the world usually would do so. If they see some favorite artist or idol, they would go kia kia to him and ask him for an autograph and take a picture together. It would go in uh, most countries, but not Japan. So Japanese people are usually protect protecting both their privacy and their understanding the privacy matter of even famous people. So the maximum thing you may do is just go ask if, like, for example, are you really that that son? Like, can I? Hold your, hold your hand, I really like your uh, movies or songs or anything like that, but not taking pictures, not even talking like that, considered not really polite because like the person has his or her day off and he doesn't really want to interact with fans. So it's not that you would meet a celebrity on the street in Japan, but if you do so it's better not to approach him or her like that. So, Japanese people are really about manners and about privacy. Sunday, like, there are also just one thing, really funny thing in uh, Japanese subway, because in uh, my country, it's okay if it's an elder person or like a pregnant uh, woman or anything like that. We usually uh, stand out from our seats, like in summer or in bus, and give the seat to that person. But in Japan, there are like special reserved seats for such people. And if they are not, if uh, like uh, they don't have place to sit out there, and uh, they just go into the subway. If you don't give him or her the seat, it's not considered impolite, it's like normal. So it's you can like if you want, it's okay and it would be kind of you to give the seat, but if it's not, like if you don't want you are not considered a bad person at all. So, yes, like, the more I live in Japan, the more manner things I find out about. It's not like the manners you usually read in textbooks, like, don't put the chopsticks into your rice, or, like, a bow and, uh, like, say thank you, or anything like that. It's like manners you won't understand unless you live in, so... I think there are much and much and much more things I yet have to discover. So if you have some things happen to you or you would like to discuss the one I mentioned, feel free to name them or ask me for them. And thank you for watching. I hope you found out some things you didn't know about and I hope that would help you 
when you will come to Japan or when you will speak with some of your Japanese friends or having Japanese for a boyfriend or whatever not. So I'm happy you watch this again and have a nice day. Bye bye.